So just before we start, a, a few Twitter shout outs. So Paul Miners has done a great article um, covering the freelance photography work and productivity habits of Anthony Gorner. So I'll link that in the description. Definitely check it out. This is Carl Pullian. I definitely recommend either following him or checking out his Todoist series that is very recent on YouTube, and I'll also link that in the description. And then finally, definitely worth checking out The Real Chad Hall. He's also on Snapchat too, but he puts some, some fantastic content. Uh, definitely worth checking out all about productivity. Uh, he reads tons of books as well, and also focuses on those kind of processes within your day. So definitely worth checking these guys out before you watch this video. Today's video focuses specifically around the iOS device Hours. And for those who don't know, Hours is a app that's been out for a while now. And it's something that you can use straight away um, to kind of monitor all of your time tracking. So just to be clear to start off with, Hours is only available on iOS. And what I'm going to be doing in this session specifically is focusing in on Hours 1.0. So if you go over to the website, you'll see that they've got a new update coming very soon. And it's something they're going to be launching in 2016. But this is the 1.0 version, which is available right now on iOS um, and iPad 2. So this will be a review on 1.0, just to be clear. Fantastic team at ours have given me access to the new version on web. Uh, and it is something I do want to review in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that. So let's get stuck into what Hours does. So as you can see, when you enter Hours, you get introduced to the user experience. So essentially, Hours is a time tracker. But I mean, I've used a lot of time trackers in the past and I found them quite difficult to manage. Um, it, didn't, it wasn't very user friendly when being able to input stuff. It kind of felt like a big giant spreadsheet. Um, and as you can see, um, they've done some really good job, even, you know, even inside this current app where the experience is just the first few pages. So when you create an account, this is what you're introduced by. So as you can see, a very simple timeline experience up here. So as you can see, it runs across the hours of the day and you can, and you can scroll across them uh, as, if it, as if it were a calendar. And as you can see, they've broken it into hour blocks. Here, you can see the, you know, the exact date, the amount of hours you've totaled, and, and also this button here allows you to add the specific timer on certain things. As you can imagine, as you go across your day, you're able to input stuff. And as you can see, a very simplistic color um, experience comes up. So let's select red, choose the project. So let's, for example, say um, YouTube would be my project here. You can add a client to it as well. You can add the specific task you're working on. So for example, I could be uh, commenting could be reviewing the amount of time I'm commenting on something. Once I added this, um, it appears in the kind of central feed. So as you can imagine, this hasn't started it as something, but if I wish to start, let's say I'm commenting right now, uh, all I do is tap that button and it begins that experience for me, uh, which is really nice because you can scroll through all of your specific timers and then be able to set these here and there. It's a very uh, fast way to monitor everything. As you can imagine, it would probably be a huge pain point if you missed a certain period of time. Say I started using hours like at three o'clock today and I missed the first hour of being able to use it. Well, what you can do is simply go in, tap each of the sections and kind of go into more detail. It brings up all the timers um, that, you know, you can specifically add a timer there. But let's say I was commenting in that period of time. All I'd have to do is select which one and I can choose exactly what period of time I was using it and split it as well, which I really like because um, you can actually go kind of in more detail and you can say you took a break in between each one, which is super valuable. So once I zoom out of that, it's already clocked it at half an hour. Um, so that's the period of time I've been working on this, which is quite nice. I mean, this user experience just feels and acts really well. And can I just remind you, this is Hours 1.0, something that they're really developing in the next version. As you can imagine, uh, it's quite valuable being able to see that kind of data. But when you're, you know, you're quickly got something open or you want to quickly view something at a glance on how you're going with your hours, what you can do is quickly access it from the notification bar. 
once you've accessed from the notification bar, what you can do is you can press this button here and actually start it from the notification bar, which is super valuable because each time you don't specifically have to go into the app and continually like, pop in, pop out. You can end them and start them straight from there. So as you can imagine, you can have multiple different timers. And on the free version, on the iOS free version, this doesn't seem to be a limit to this, which is super valuable. You can also press this calendar feature in the top left-hand corner and be able to zoom out and be able to, you know, go back and f populate loads of stuff. Um, and that's super popular. I mean, why would you use this kind of service? Um, well, I asked the same question. And what I did is I spent a whole week focusing in on using hours. And I used it as an auditing tool. So what I did is I pre-selected all my timers to start off with. Um, and I basically just logged everything I did. Although, you know, that initial week was a bit painful because I had to keep going in and logging everything. The value it can add at the end of it is quite important. So in the settings tab, you get a host of different settings. I won't go into detail on this kind of detail uh, down at the bottom because obviously you've got some information on rounding rules, adding notes, hints and sounds and reminders, all those great things. But the reporting feature is something that is really cool. So as you can imagine, what you can do is select a specific period of time that you've worked. So let's say this month I want an audit of exactly what I worked on. And you can actually find out, oh, Jesus, I spent too much time emailing last month. Or, oh, Jesus, I need to focus more of my attention on doing YouTube, creating YouTube videos. Or I need to focus my attention on cleaning the house. But basically, it gives you that ability to then see all of the numbers at a glance. So using this for a whole week, I was able to actually audit myself in December 2015 and bring up some really valuable data. Final feature I want to mention is the export feature inside here. So say you wanted it available on other devices or even on your computer and be able to see the data, send it to your boss, you know, be able to actually break it down. So what you can do is send it in two different formats, export it in with details with notes, so you can add notes to each of them or a summary. So I'm gonna select summary. You can choose uh, email as PDF or CSV, um, or you can actually get the broken down report inside the app, which is really valuable. And I find this kind of auditing process really valuable because it's actually fun to be able to audit what you're actually working on and kind of get that kind of value um, and be able to make some decisions based on that data. Um, and it also allows you to go, okay, I actually did this much work this month or I did this much leisure. And from there, you can actually make some decisions on whether you need to improve on those certain areas or not. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's the Hours app. That's Hours 1.0. And that's something that I wanted to review because it's something I use quite heavily um, in the last couple of months. Obviously, that wasn't my own account. So I probably will have to do a separate video about how I use this in my kind of daily routine. But at the moment, that was just a kind of basic explainer. I definitely recommend it. If you've got an iOS device, this is the app you need to get. And what's valuable as well is 2.0 has a lot more updates. I'm gonna include the link in the description because I think it's valuable for you to understand what 2.0 does above 1.0. But I've been playing around with their web client, which isn't available yet, and I'm very impressed. And with the new kind of cloud service they're gonna offer, I think all of, like, productivity, in general, will be bene benefited from this because I think you can get some more self-awareness on where you're spending your time and what's valuable. So definitely download this app and I'll include everything in the description. Um, but thank you very much, everyone. Make sure to have a great week. Keep productive and I'll see you guys very soon. Cheers.